Hi guys, I hope you're doing well. My name is Ander Greis and I welcome you to a new video. The UI of an Android app makes a huge part of the overall perception of the whole product. Maybe it's even the biggest point. A cool feature to give your UI an extra touch is to define the UI elements according to the color palette of a specific image that is displayed. But how can we achieve this in Jetpack Compose? Luckily, we have the Color Palette API that allows us to take the prominent colors from a specific image or to be more specific, from a bitmap, and then allows us to use these colors to style our UI. But how can we actually do that? And that is exactly what we're going to look at today. To showcase what we're going to do, we have a simple screen here, a toolbar, a button and the placeholder image. And if I click on pick a photo now, the photo picker opens up. And if I pick now, for example, this image here, you see that the whole screen is styled accordingly to these colors. I change it to this red forest here. You can see the red prominent colors get applied and also these dark details here. And yeah, it looks a really nice, in my opinion. And yeah, you can customize your screen according to the image. It's maybe not overall appropriate because you may have an overall color scheme, but in some cases, it can be a nice detail to your image preface or something like that. And yeah, let's dive into the code. But first, before we actually start, make sure you have these dependencies included in your build rail. You will need the lifecycle library with at least version 2.6.0 alpha 01, and also the accompanist system UI controller that will be used to style our system bar, and also, of course, the palette API or library itself. So I prepared a little example here, the color palette activity. And you may recognize this uh, result activity contract from a previous tutorial. I will link it here. And all you need to know for this part is that this contract returns an image URI that um, links to an image from the gallery or the file system. And then we have our color palette view model. And this view model holds the view state with an image bitmap and also a palette that comes from the actual library. The view state itself is sold in a state flow. And let's take a look at the function that receives the URI from the file system. First, we are launching a new coroutine in the dispatcher IO flag because we don't need this uh, code snippet to be executed on the main thread. We can run it in the background. Then we use the content resolver to open an input stream that links to our URI or uses the URI. Then we use the content resolver to open an input stream um, by that URI, and we use the use function that will automatically close the input stream after the usage, and then we decode the stream to a bitmap. The bitmap, on the other hand, can then be used to generate a palette from this bitmap. And what this function does is that it analyzes the bitmap and receives the prominent colors and stores it in this object. If you're not using coroutines, you can also use an equivalent of this generate function, which is asynchronous. In that case, you would use a callback, but just as I said, we are in a coroutine, that's why we can also use the generate function. After we received our bitmap, we then pass in the new image bitmap, which can be used in Compose, and also the palette. And now let's go back to the color palette. Back at our color palette activity, we use state hoisting to receive our view state and then pass the respective variables to our actual composable. But first, let's see. We have the view state and also the palette. And the first thing we will style is the system bar. And that is where the accompanist system UI controller comes into play. We get our color. I wrote a little helper function here, extension function on the swatch, which holds these color values, as the documentation also states, and um, just wraps it, the, the int value, this RGB, into a composed color. 
We can then just use the system UI controller to set the system bar colors. And if no colors present, we use just white as the default. Next, we have our actual screen. We use a scaffold as parent container and bundle to the max size. We have a top bar that on the other hand also uses colors from the color palette. Um, there are various variants of, this, uh, of these colors. You can quickly look them up. You have like Byron Swatch, Dark Muted Swatch, Light Muted Swatch, and so on. Yeah, all these uh, colors differ. And we use Dark Vibrant Swatch for the background color of the top bar. And also Light Vibrant Swatch for the text color. Then let's proceed to the interesting part. Here we use the image bitmap to paste in an image that we previously saw. And here's the placeholder part. And on the last part, we have the button that triggers our intent result launcher and yeah, is responsible for receiving the actual image. And another helper function here is the get gradient background color, where we use the palette to create a linear gradient, as you can see in the background here, the slightly gradient that can be seen. And that is what this function does. And if no value is available, we just paste in these two white variables. Of course, you can experiment with this API and maybe you only style some parts of UI or like I did here, the whole UI. But overall, I think it's a very cool feature to be used in your app, but you shouldn't really overuse it because you often want to your brand color to be present. Um, yeah. And that's already it for today. A real quick one, but I hope you had some takeaways. Like the video, subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I hope to see you soon.